So in this video, I want to talk about the basics of adding lights to your scene. Take a boring scene like what you see in front of me and turn it into something that looks like this. with just a few clicks and adding a few colored lights to your scene. Now lights get added to your scene just like any other object. We're going to press Shift A. And you can see here we have a light option and there's four options there. We're going to talk about three of them to start with and we'll come back to the sun as the fourth light. Now I'm going to add in a point light. I can move it around just like any other object. I'm going to move that up. Maybe get a top view and kind of move it into the middle like so. Now, if I click on the little light bulb icon over here, we get our light options. You can see up here at the top, we have our four different types of lights. So Blender allows us to change light types just here in the uh, light properties. We don't have to delete the lights and add another one, which is pretty nice. You can see here we've got our color. So maybe I'll change that around. Maybe make something blue like that. Then we have this power setting and this is uh, this is set at 10 watts, which is pretty low. And this is the intention here is to have some connection to the brightness of a light bulb. I'm going to turn that up to maybe 125 watts. We then have this specular setting, and I personally have a little bit of a hard time seeing the effect of this on a simple scene like this. But specular has to do with uh, reflections and how light bounces off of surfaces. You also have this radius setting. Now, to me, this is a little counterintuitive. If I would think radius, I'm thinking about how far this light can go. That is not what this is all about. This radius setting uh, has something to do with how dispersed the light is. So if I increase the radius without changing the power, the light is going to get softer. It's going to get more dispersed. It's going to look less bright. Now, if I render this, and I'm going to do that in the EV engine just for the sake of time, you can see the effect of the light on our scene. We've got a blue light there in the middle. Objects that are closer to the light are brighter. Objects that are farther away are darker. And it, once again, our render engine has added the shadows. So let's add another light. This time I'm going to add a spotlight. Once again, I'm going to move that up. I'm going to rotate it out like so. The spotlight also has a couple of gizmos here. You can see if I grab the yellow dot here. We can move it around and point it wherever we'd like. You can also grab this blue arrow move it back and forth and we can change the cone size of our spotlight. I'm going to move up to the top view, move it over here and rotate it. So it looks something like that and maybe narrow it down like that. Now, if you look over in our light settings, you can see the same settings that our point light had. You also have the uh, spot shape, which is the size or that angle that we were adjusting. You also have this blend setting. If the blend setting is zero, the edges of the spotlight are going to be very, very sharp. If you move it up to one, the edges of the spotlight are going to be more diffuse and uh, they're going to fade out a little bit more. I'm also going to give it a little bit of color while we're at it. Give it a little bit of color and I'm going to turn up the brightness like so. Once again, if we render it, we can see the effect of that light added to our scene. You can see that the uh, boxes closest to it are bright green. And you can see in other places in the scene that the blue and the green light is mixing, creating a little bit of a different color. You can also see here the edge of the spotlight. The bottom of that box is not being illuminated by that spotlight. Now to help with that, you can come down here and press the show cone. And that's going to show you what objects in your scene that spotlight is going to hit, which is pretty useful when you're setting up a scene, especially if you're using the cycles engine and it takes a long time to iterate or to get a preview of your image. So the next type of light that I'm going to add is the area light. And this is different in that it allows us to create an area or a geometric shape that is the source of light. Unlike the point light, which is literally just a point and the spotlight, which again is a point, but focused in one direction. The area light allows us to create a geometric shape that is the source of light. Now, once again, it's got this yellow button here, a knob. I can pull on that and move that around and I can aim the light wherever I want it to go. You can also see over here in the light properties that we have a shape. By default, it's set to square. Maybe I'll make a rectangle and we'll make it longer in one direction versus the other. Let's change the color. Let's make it really red. We'll give this thing some more power. And we can see the results of this third light. If we render it, you can see that the three lights are now interacting. They're blending together, creating new colors. Uh, they're fading together. It looks pretty good. Now, lights are a pretty quick and easy way to add some interest, some color, some splash to your images. Now, there's one last type of light that we haven't talked about, and that is the sunlight. So let's add that in. Raise that up just so we can see it. Now, the sunlight is fundamentally different than the other lights. It does not matter where it is in your scene. Those other lights, if you move them around, 
it's going to change how that light affects the objects in the scene. The sun, all that matters is which direction it's pointing, which direction it's facing. And you can see that by this orange line that's coming out of the sun. Right now, the sun is pointing straight down. Now, if I come over here and change the strength, let's maybe make this 10 and render this. You can see the effect. We've got the straight down sun. The only shadow you can see is under this icosphere. It doesn't look super great. Just like the other lights, I can grab the yellow button, the yellow knob here, and I can move the sun around. If I do something like that, maybe give it a little bit of color and re-render. You can see it's really bright, but now you can see that the shadows are going in the direction that the sun is facing. That's pretty obvious this is useful for outdoor scenes, but it could also be used in indoor scenes if you want light coming from one direction to affect all the objects the same, be the same brightness in all those objects, and cast shadows all in the same direction and not really have to care about where that light is placed in that scene. So there you go. That's the very basics of adding lights to your scene. I encourage you to go out, play, be creative, play around with different colored lights, adding them together, creating different shadows. You can create some pretty interesting effects, even with primitive shapes and a pretty basic scene like what I have here on my screen.